Welcome to Beyond Places, the podcast about the planning, design, and leadership of the communities and cities we call home. I'm Carmi Palafox, an urban planner and economist. Join me in conversations with thought leaders and visionaries from around the world. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Beyond Places. Our guest was elected as mayor for three consecutive terms from 2001 to 2010 and as congressman from 2010 to 2013 of the city of San Juan. He has been hailed among the 10 outstanding young men in the field of public administration for his performance as local chief executive of the city. He was then elected as senator of the Republic of the Philippines in 2013 and again in 2022. As chairman of the Senate Health Committee of the 17th Congress, he became the principal sponsor and author of the Universal Health Care Law that was passed in 2019, which aims to provide better access to the country's public health care system to more Filipinos. He is also an advocate of affordable and quality housing, which led to his efforts in passing the law, creating the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. In the Senate, he vowed to advocate for better public transportation and infrastructure development, including a robust railway system, which will provide jobs to millions of Filipinos. He is currently the chairperson of the Committee on Local Government and the Committee of Urban Planning, Housing, and Resettlement. Welcome, the good one of the Senate, Senator J.V. Ejercito. Hi, Army. Uh, pleasant evening to you, to all uh... Your viewers and uh, subscribers. Hello. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you again, Senator JV. And I was so happy to hear the news that you are back in the Senate. Congratulations. And again, back in serving as the chairperson of the Committee on Urban Planning, Housing and Settlement, and of course, of local government. So as a quick intro, I worked for Senator JV as his consultant for four and a half years from 2014 to 2018. And you were then the committee chair on urban planning house settlements and you're back there. So I'd like to ask Senator JV, what are your priorities at the start of this Congress? Well, uh, as you mentioned, no, you were with me for four and a half years and uh, it was a very, I would say that it was a very productive term. We were able to pass two landmark legislations, aside from the other significant measures. Of course, the one that you mentioned, the universal healthcare law, and the creation of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Although these uh, landmark legislations were was passed, it's in the implementation phase in its infancy. So one of the reasons that I really wanted to go back to the Senate is who I was hoping that I would really want to oversee the implementation to make sure they go in the right direction as what we have envisioned it to be. And I think that uh, as the principal sponsor of this two landmark legislation, the wisdom of the sponsor is very, very much needed, especially in the early stages of the implementation no? because we are still in the infancy. So uh, I, I really would want to oversee the proper implementation, as, as I mentioned, I would like to see that it goes in the right direction. At least I'm back in the Senate. Yeah, I think this, this will be my priorities to oversee these two landmark legislations. And as earlier, uh, you mentioned about my advocacy on the transportation, modernization, and infrastructure development. My number one bill, no? the very first bill that I filed in this Congress, Comprehensive Master Plan for infrastructure development and transport modernization. So that's the number one, because I have always believed that through infrastructure development, this will stimulate economic growth and spread out the development all over the country. So I'm hoping that I will be able to pass this measure so that whoever sits as president, no, whoever sits as president, we will already have a blueprint or a master plan that the government will be following in the next 50 to 100 years. Those are my priorities right now. So about that infrastructure development master plan, I was really interested uh, when I was reading about it, especially you stressing that the long term, because you know I think you would agree, Senator GV, there have been numerous plans already, but then it seems that there's no long-term vision or teeth for, for them to hold to you, what are the main issues with infrastructure planning uh, and practice uh, at the moment? I sad to say, Carmino, that Philippines 
I would say that we are now 30 years behind in terms of infrastructure development. That's a conservative estimate, probably more. Probably it's because of our political system in terms of the, pres the national officials, including the president, is only six years. And the local officials is three, three terms for three years. So I think that most of the officials are concerned for the legacy that they would, would uh, leave behind. No? So what can you accomplish in six years? What can you accomplish in three years? And when we talk about infrastructure development, the transport modernization and big ticket items, this would mean five, 10, probably 15 years or more of uh, development. No? So probably that is the reason why we really, we, we were really left behind in terms of infrastructure development no? by our neighbors. No? Just in ASEAN, we used to be in the top three or top five in terms of economic growth, but now we have fallen behind Vietnam. So we are now number six, just in the ASEAN. I would say I would attribute out the foreign investments, no? shying away from us and going instead to Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and now Vietnam, and we are just number six on the list because of our poor infrastructure and high cost of energy. So I have been advocating this since I was still in Congress. I've been pushing for the railway system, the modernized airports, so that we can at least be attractive to foreign investors. And if we talk about railways, thanks for, for mentioning that. I do recall you really have been a champion of railways. What are railway projects that are definitely starting in this administration? Actually, during the Duterte administration, Carmi, the good news is that I was the one also who defended projects of the Department of Transportation that included the airport modernization, the new Clark International Airport, which, which would serve as the second gateway to Metro Manila from 2 million passengers annually with the new terminal building. It has increased its capacity to about 9 to 10 million passengers and it's now taking in international flights. Second, the north-south commuter line, a railway line from which starts from Laguna, will pass to Metro Manila and will end in Clark in Pampanga, is already underway. It's the construction is already in the area of Clark, no? This is being done by uh, JICA or Japan through JICA and ADB. So this is already a work in progress. That's a good news. And uh, hopefully the Manila subway system, which, we, which is also committed by Japan, will start very soon. Hopefully under the new administration, President Bongo Marcos also mentioned that he would want to prioritize the railway system. He would continue with the north-south commuter line. Hopefully, the Biko line, no, in the South Link, uh, hopefully it will be renegotiated because uh, China is supposed to do the project, but seems that it is not moving. Likewise, the Mindanao railway system, for the first time in history, we would have a Mindanao railway system, which incidentally, I also defended and pushed during the Duterte administration. Hopefully, this will also be started anytime soon. It's great that you are the champion of public transport modernization. And... You know, we've quoted many times, and I think, Senator Javier, you're very familiar with the quote of the former mayor of Bogota, who said, you know, a rich culture or country is one where everyone uh, takes public transport. And it's great that you as a lawmaker and, you know, a senior official understands because, you know, you go on the road and you are a cyclist as well and an avid uh, motorbike rider. So you seeing the country with two wheels and on foot as well, how has it changed your perception of what would be important to prioritize in terms of infrastructure? Or maybe like how to address safety concerns of for riders and other motorists? Well, probably I, I think I mean, that is my advantage you know, as compared to other legislators. As you mentioned, I'm an avid cyclist. I bike almost four or five, even six times a week. <laughs> I have been a motorcycle rider and I am able to go to the far-flung areas, no? areas the, which are not often visited by uh, national officials no? uh, like Kalinga, Apayao, other areas in Cordillera, in Mindanao, other areas that are outside of the capital of the different provinces I'm able to go. And here in Metro Manila, while I bike around or I use my motorcycle, it's different car if you're using your bicycle or or riding a motorcycle, you see everything. 
uh, on the ground, no? Because there's no aircon, there's no driver. You can observe almost anything that I, uh, as you go along, no? as, you, uh, as, I drive, as I ride along. So there's still a lot of things to be done, but I, I still think that the major thing that we really have to really prioritize is the railway system, the mass transit, so that it will not only solve the traffic problem, but I think it will decongest Metro Manila no? by uh, spreading out the development. Because when we have the railway system, all the provinces no, that will uh, have railway stations will now become growth areas, new growth development areas. No? We'll, uh, we can have industrial estates, um, commercial uh, centers, food terminals, and other things that would make it a growth node. So uh, it will create jobs, create opportunities, so that people will not anymore uh, squeeze and try their luck in Metro Manila. No? We will now be able to spread out the development to the countryside. So we can hit two birds with one stone. We, we will now be able to decongest Metro Manila. We will be able to create jobs and opportunities in the provinces and spread out the development and stimulate economic growth in the different parts of the country. So that's why I'm really pushing for infra development. No doubt that this will really be costly, but I think in the end, the returns no, to the economy will be enormous. Can you share more about you know, some of the most beautiful sites that you've seen and even maybe a perhaps pleasantly surprising roads that are of good quality? Well, actually, I've been riding a lot of the recent years. No? I used to be a car enthusiast, but I later on, I enjoyed riding the motorcycle more, probably because while I still can, no, I took a thing advantage. But the motorcycle, I think that you can appreciate the beauty of the country more. No, You can feel the air. You can see everything. I'm able, As I mentioned earlier, you can go to the far-flung areas, of which if you drive the car, I don't think you will do because it's quite far. <laughs> So I've been pushing and uh, promoting new hidden treasures. Uh, in fact, I, I was the one who spearheaded the Philippine Motorcycle Tourism, which was adopted by the Department of Tourism. Now, beautiful places and hidden treasures in the country would be promoted no? because you know tourism has a very good multiplier effect to the economy. So I've been traveling a lot in the northern Luzon area, Cordilleras, no? Sagada, Banawe, Fugao, these are very nice places. Ilocos region, Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, La Union. And there are a lot of hidden treasures. No, You just have to go around of the cities or the capital. Mindanao is also one of the bikers haven. We are developing, developing it to become an international biking uh, destination because of the new, the very good roads in Mindanao. Four, six, eight lane roads, very beautiful places and very good food. So good food and uh, good views and the, and the culture and the character of the different places you'll be able to experience when you're using a motorcycle. Senator JV, so I'm based in, in Sydney, as you know, and it's not a perfect uh, planning system. And a lot of you know the people I work here say it's very late how they started to uh, have in parallel land use plans and transport plans. So listening to you now, I think it's perfect timing that you know there's this new department of housing, settlements, and urban development. So maybe you know as they start, it would be good to align their land use plan with the infrastructure development master plan that you're talking yes. about. Yes, that is correct. Hoping to have this master plan. The blueprint which the country would be with now, which the government will now follow, whoever sits as president. Huh? We can have a better planning this time. Unlike before, that the housing program where the cheapest land, that's where developers or the, uh, the National Housing Authority will buy land, develop even if it's far from uh, civilization, no? No, no access to healthcare, to educational facilities, far from work, workplace. So that's why. I'm hoping under the new Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, we will now have a township development no? for all housing programs. That means we, there will be access to healthcare, educational facilities, transportation hubs, and uh, livelihood. No? So hopefully with the master plan that I'm also pushing, with the railway system, no? with the, each uh, railway station in the provinces, industrial parks, uh, commercial areas, food terminals, and the housing component will likewise be part of that master plan. So, of course, Philippines is one of the fastest, if not the fastest, growing population now. 
So yes. I think we're about, is it 112 million currently? Ah, uh, thereabouts. thereabouts. Yes, 110. Yes. And then estimates by 2050, there will probably be around 40 to 50 million more people. So the question wow. is, <laughs> where where do we house them and where do we put them? So of course, it's good that um, you're talking about townships. So I guess now is a time to start planning and identifying where these new townships will be, Senator JV. So how do you, of course, it's you know early stages, but I think what would be crucial is the cooperation between national and local governments and across agencies and in doing that it's a big task <laughs> well yeah that's why uh, i'm really pushing for the infra to be realized because i think uh, with the growing population uh, as you mentioned we will probably have about plus 40 50 million filipinos in the coming decades years. if we do not move wow traffic will really be a problem um, urbanization urban decay will be a problem especially in metro manila my personal opinion is that the only way we can really decongest metro manila and create growth areas all over the country is through infrastructure development or through the railway system which i think can become the backbone of the economy when this is realized so if we talk about housing i guess picking up where we left off senator jv when when i was working with you you re really advocating in-city affordable housing. And I recall with work being done by you and your office, your counterpart in, in Congress in the lower house and HUD see the time, um, you were able to identify there are thousands of hectares of idle government land. Um, so you were starting to look into engaging with private sector into tapping the potential for having them for housing or urban farms, townships. Is that something that you're looking into reviving? Yes, that's part of the trust of the new Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. In the past, housing programs, as I mentioned, are in the far-flung areas where the land is cheap, but uh, you displace people. No, uh, It's too far, it's so inconvenient. So what happens is people will transfer I will be forced to transfer, but after a few months, or not, not even a year, they leave the housing that was given to them and they will squat again. So it has been a cycle. That's why I've been advocating if we want it to be successful, we have to have in-city or near-city housing. No? Uh, there's still a lot of idle lands inhabited by informal settlers, so we can probably redevelop these areas, medium-rise housing units, of which they will be the beneficiaries, and at least maximize the lands no, of which uh, these formal settler colonies are in. So probably we can redevelop and use it uh, mixed use, probably with commercial, so that it will be already opportunities for jobs and probably can use the upper floors for their housing. So I'm hoping, that's why I really wanted to go back to the Senate. I want to make sure that the the new administration, the new officials would follow and go in the right direction of which the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development was envisioned to be. Senator JV, there was a project that uh, you started when you were mayor of San Juan and it was implemented uh, during the following term, uh, which was um, led by your mom when she was mayor of San Juan. It's the in-city affordable housing so from what I understand, the residents there were formerly uh, informal settlers and now, you know, they're condo unit owners. So I think if you talk briefly about how that was able to be done, because it's very rare and, you know, it, it, it can be done. So how do you think other LGUs can, can copy <laughs> or even do better? Definitely it's rare, but if you really prioritize it, it can be done, no? Because... Land in Metro Manila is very, very expensive. That's why our developer, NHA, they don't think, uh, they think that it will not be feasible because, I, as I mentioned, the cost of land in Metro Manila is very expensive. So what the local government unit did in San Juan, we were able to develop former informal settler communities. And in some areas, we, the, the local government expropriated land. No? So the medium-rice housing units can be built no, it was a joint venture. The local government of San Juan, city government of San Juan, will uh, own the land and the National Housing Authority as the developer will come in to develop the housing unit. So it was a joint venture. It was a very successful a joint venture between the National Housing Authority and the city government of San Juan. And uh, there are other areas 
warehousing no, other cities like Valenzuela, which prioritized the housing program, also have a very, they also have a very successful housing program. In fact, they have a rental housing program as well. So I would think that if you really prioritize, if the city government or the local government unit prioritizes housing, it can be done. As I understand, currently the devolution of uh, certain government functions um, is in transition, if not in full swing already, Senator JV. How will that change the planning and provision of affordable housing? Because currently, responsibility of national government, not local government, to provide affordable housing. Is that correct? Well, we will still have to see, you know, because this is still the first year of implementation of that law, you know, uh, devolving certain ages of government. But I think with housing, it will still be the same. The Department of Human Settlements or Urban Development is still there. We, what we were able to do in San Juan and Valenzuela probably can be um, done also elsewhere. You know? A joint venture between the housing, of the national agency, and the local government unit. So it's the scheme. I think that can be done in other areas, no? especially with this new devolution that has happened. But we still have to see, you know, because I just returned, and it's the first year of fermentation, definitely there will be adjustments that have to be made as we go along. And it would probably vary per LGU in terms of capacity and capability. Yes, uh, our worry there is, personally, I think uh, I'm worried with the smaller municipalities. No? That's our concern. They have the capability to really absorb some of the functions that will be devolved, no? like health, you mentioned housing, among others. So that remains to be seen and I think it, other LGUs are now realizing that there's really limitations to their capacity to be able to uh, really implement and uh, absorb all of these things. So I, we really have to review this law, I think, in the next coming years. Thank you for, for that, Senator JV. So the private sector has huge potential to help in providing housing because currently I think the housing backlog is, is it 5.5 million? I think it's about almost 3 million and probably 5.5 5 million. million in the coming, if you don't do any the housing uh, uh, program doesn't improve, uh, it will uh, reach about 5.5 million in the coming years. In your conversations with uh, private sector developers, what are they asking for, for them to be able to provide affordable housing? Well, ease of doing business, though, if it will be easier for them to secure permits, licenses, things that uh, they would need. I think a lot of uh, developers, private developers, will really go into socialized housing, especially now. And the backlog is uh, steadily growing, but hopefully under the new Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, we can streamline, we can make things faster. And it, so that uh, a lot of private developers would uh, be encouraged to do projects for for the government. So, of course, you're also a champion for, for healthy cities. Of course, you used to also lead the Committee on, on Health. And as we mentioned earlier, you were the principal sponsor of the universal health care law. And, you know, with what's happened in the last two years, there's this consciousness of how do we build healthier cities in, in the Philippines? Are there any considerations that you've been thinking about in terms of how we could do that? But probably with this pandemic, we really have to make a lot of adjustments in terms of design. Uh, people are now more conscious. A lot of people are now, now prefer open air, uh, bigger spaces. So probably we can, uh, it has to be part of our new designs now, no? For buildings, for offices, for commercial areas. I think that will be the new normal now because of what the COVID-19 and the pandemic has uh, really brought, I, I think we really have to make adjustments now so that we can now adapt to the situation. So I think bigger spaces, uh, more open spaces probably, and uh, new designs for the workplaces so that uh, people will now feel confident no, in uh, going to their workplaces. And may I add, um, Senator, I guess active mobility, like more cycling and, and walking yes, as well to uh, be encouraged. I'm hoping that our new roads and other infrastructure that will be built, no, it will now be a standard to have bicycle lanes, scooter lanes, so that can, uh, we can encourage no, cycling, especially in Metro Manila. No, it's very close 
I think that uh, it's very practical, no? To have uh, cycling or bicycles in going to work or other places. Is there anything you want to highlight, Senator? We just have to implement all of these things that uh, we uh, discussed uh, today, guys. Especially, for example, universal healthcare is the principal sponsor. I, uh, especially with this pandemic, exposed and or even exacerbated the weaknesses of our healthcare system. All the more that the UHC or the universal healthcare has to be implemented and prioritized. Second, with regards to housing, I'm hoping that again to change that uh, cycle, not so good performance of the housing under uh, HUDC because there, there were six different housing agencies in doing their own thing. I'm hoping that under one full-fledged department of human settlements and urban development, we will now be able to have better housing programs because the different agencies will now be under one roof, will be now synchronized and will now move in one direction. So I'm hoping to really look at this and uh, monitor, closely monitor and oversee the implementation of the new Department of Human Settlements and Human Development. And last but not the least, I'm hopeful and I'm, I'm very excited that the new president, President Bongbo Marcos, mentioned in his uh, first State of the Region address that he will prioritize infrastructure development. So I'm quite happy being an advocate of infra development, transport modernization, so all of these things were touched no, during the sauna. So all of these things were like music to my ears. I was, in fact, I just arrived the day before from Europe and I was suffering from jet lag <laughs> during sauna. But when I heard all about these things, they were, I, it really perked me up. There's still a lot of things to be done. But again, I'm hopeful that under this administration, we'll be able to pick up where we left off um, during 2019. Thank you so much, Senator JV. And again, congratulations um, on being back in the Senate. And I'd be very happy to, to talk with you and the team again. Um, you know, if you want to um, bounce off ideas on the big work that you have uh, ahead of you. <laughs> thank you so yes, much for your time. Thank you also, Carmi, and uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to see you, and uh, like you. thank you also for, for being with us for four and a half years, which resulted in a very productive, and at least we were able to pass a landmark legislation that is the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. So nice uh, talking to you. Hope to see you very soon. Yes, I hope so. I hope to see you in Manila. And wanted to add, Senator JV, because I wanted to, the listeners to know, you know, my time working with you as a consultant was very fruitful. And I really saw how you were engaging with stakeholders, you know, on the ground. Um, I was with you when you were the first lawmaker to visit Marawi after the siege. <laughs> and, you know, the Senate hearings um, that we were uh, a part of, we did a lot of research and understanding and consultations, you know, about rehabilitation work after disasters, planning for resilience, traffic, as we said earlier, housing. So I'm very excited you're there and I'm sure you and the team are, are back being very busy again and trying to solve all these issues. Yes, Kai, we, uh, we're hoping that this will be another productive, uh, I'm sure that it will be. And again, uh, we'll just pick up where we left off and with the help of everyone, I think we'll be able to do a lot of things, a lot of problems, a lot of things to be done, but we will just do our best no? uh, so that we will uh, be able to help, no? improve the, of course, improve the quality of lives of, of our people. Great. Thank you, Senator Davey. Thank you. Carly. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Beyond Places. I would love to hear from you. Feel free to connect with me on social media and carmipalafox at gmail.com. If you enjoy this podcast, please do subscribe. Bye and see you again in the next episode.